All right. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a good one. We're going to talk about Aptera and how they are going to make some big changes to the auto industry. And so we are going to get into this baby right now. Welcome back to my channel. It's good to have you here. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, we appreciate you continuing to support the channel. And we're going to get into Aptera and how they are going to change the status quo. So let's look at some of these other vehicles and talk about some of these other vehicles and how they actually had the opportunity to do that. And well, and we'll get your feedback on some of them. So let's get into this baby. What we're going to talk about is the GM EV1. And in response to a 1996 California mandate, the automakers sell a small percentage of zero emission vehicles, which they were actually talking about only electric cars, because that's the only vehicle that met the standard. So while other automakers did just that, creating the likes of the Toyota RAV4 EV, GM shot for the moon, applying all technology it could bring to bear with the aim of establishing industry leadership with its impact concept car. The production version, the GM EV1, had all the latest tech, save for its reliance on the lead acid batteries. This concept cost within reason after GM splurged on alloy, this magnesium that, an induction charging system, and seriously advanced electronics to manage the efficient AC motor. A lot went into the inverter, which managed charging DC battery power to AC for the motor to use and AC back to DC to recharge the battery in regeneration mode. To maximize performance, the EV1 was a tiny two-seater, but it launched into a marketplace surging on giant SUVs. Aside from the true believers, people did not embrace it. About 800 were leased in Los Angeles, Tucson, and Phoenix between 1996 and 2003. The last cars were built in 1991. Creating a modern electric car demonstrated the differences between invention and innovation and the challenges of each process. Invention is the development of a new idea. Innovation is bringing the idea to market and convincing society to adopt the technology. The EV1 was the first modern electric car designed for a mass market. Beginning in 1996, General Motors built 1,117 of the cars and leased most of them to the consumers in California, Arizona, and Georgia, and other places. The EV1 became the focal point of a national discussion about innovation and the promise of reducing air pollution and dependence on oil with electric cars. In 1990, the California Air Resources Board required automakers to offer emission-free vehicles in 1998. The EV1 aerodynamic shaped advanced power management system developed by human and solar-powered aircraft innovator Paul McCready and GM Electric Vehicles made the new car practical, energy efficient, and appealing to consumers. But in 2003, GM abruptly canceled the EV1 program, citing high production costs in a small market. Citizens protested over the EV1's termination reflected public demand for energy reform. Concerned about air pollution and climate change, the interest in low energy costs per mile and appealing drive qualities created a market for electric cars. The General Motors team that developed the pioneering EV1 electric car had to invent new technologies that are now commonplace on EVs. Among them, low rolling resistant tires, keyless ignition, a heat pump for HVAC, and regenerative braking. 
In the 1990s, the team working on the electric car that became the MG EV1 faced many challenges. Foremost among them, the means of extracting even marginally usable range. The car had the MG equivalent of about a half a gallon of gas stored in its 26 lead acid propulsion batteries. And this problem required rethinking just about everything on the then cutting edge automobile. Adding a nickel metal hydride battery option that delivered the 70 to 160 mile range promised for the lead acid version didn't fix the facts that one, the EV1 was a NASA scaled money pit for a company that subsequently even events suggest could have better spent its resources on its core product. Two, the California mandate was lifted in response to intensive lobbying from automakers, including GM. And three, many others who were devoted to resources to encourage consumers to embrace electric cars. GM took a big hit on its public image when it refused to sell the cars to the leaseholders and crushed most of them. So what was interesting is that GM could have changed the status quo, but they didn't. They dropped the ball and they ended up destroying their future. They crushed all the EVs that they had and thus they dropped out of the picture. But then somebody else came into the picture and that was actually Toyota. Toyota came out with the Prius, which was launched in uh, America in the year 2000. And its model used a 1.5 liter gasoline engine and an electric motor. And it was one of the first mass produced hybrid vehicles in the world. So right here, as we look at this chart, we can see what the gas mileage was in each year. And so by the time the Toyota Prius came out, which was 99, 2000, right at 20 miles per gallon is what vehicles were getting there. But then the Prius, when it came out, it offered something good, which was up to 40 miles or 41 miles of range. And a lot of consumers wanted to, you know, get away from spending so much money on gas and oil because, you know, not only was it polluting the environment, but I mean, the whole high price of gas kept changing and fluctuating and nobody really wanted that hung over their head. And so we needed something that was actually going to change the status quo. So just check with me. I'm going to do this in a two part video. And my next video is going to talk about what actually brought the big change and then how Aptera is actually going to change the status quo that we're living in today. But now we're going to go and we're going to take a look at what's happening on Aptera and see what's happening on the accelerator program. I know that um, they had opened it back up and there should be some big changes on there. And I I'll probably will get excited because I just love Aptera and I know that they're going to make the biggest change of all in a long time. And so this is what we have right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh wow. What a drop. The last time I checked it was at, um, let me check, 619. And that was down to 592. That's a 27 drop. Oh my goodness. So they added 27 investors since they opened it up. Oh, look at Aptera move this baby. This is awesome to see. So uh, like I was saying, this is really going to drop really fast. So if you want to invest in Aptera, this is the web page you want to come to. Just, you know, hit the accelerate or you want to invest and it'll bring you to this page. And then, of course, you have to have $10,000 or more. But uh, let me just throw this out there. I'm not a financial advisor. Just to let you know up front 
This is not advice from me. I'm just, I'm just hyped for Aptera. I'm excited for Aptera and what they're doing and what they're going to bring to the table. But if this is something that you're excited about, talk to your financial advisor and see if this is something that you want to get involved with because Aptera is going to do a lot of big things. They are doing fantastic things. And if you just want to order Aptera, then you can hit my link below and it'll bring you to this page and you can actually get $30 off the down payment. All you had to do is put $70 down and you can design your own Aptera just from this side right here. But awesome things are happening and Aptera is getting ready to make a very big move. And so this would be a good time to become a part of Aptera's family. So I want to thank you, my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting me. You guys are always there for me. If you're new here, hit the like, ring the bell, subscribe. And once again, don't forget to check out my next part. This is part one and part two will be coming out soon. So y'all take care. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of your day and you have a good one. Bye-bye. Do you mind to quit your pretending truth or